to find the x and the y intercept to find the x intercept you let y equal to zero and then solve for x so the x intercept here if you let y equal to zero you have um, I'm gonna do it down here so 0 equals to 2x cubed plus 12x squared plus 16x. So let's try to factor it out first. So I'm going to have 2x and x squared plus 6x plus 8. So you can see right here what we have is x, minus, uh, x plus 4, x plus 2. So we have 0 here, we have negative 4, and we have negative 2. So for the x-intercept, we have 0, negative 4, and negative 2. For y-intercept, we let x equal to 0. And in this case, when you let x equal to 0, everything is 0. All right, let's talk about the end behaviors. Before I do the problems, I want to remind you something. So if the exponents, let's see, that's my polynomial. Now, if I have, um, if I have even exponents, so even n, I'm gonna have even n, so I have two scenarios. So even n and a is a positive number. So n is even. And a is positive, and in this case, a is negative number. And this is how I remember um, I always remember the parabola, which is x squared. So that's going to be the even function. Now, if we have a positive, it's going to, the end uh, behavior is going to, the graph is going to open up like this. If you have a less than zero, which is negative coefficient, it's going to open downward. All right, now if I have n is odd and a is, uh, a is positive, n is odd, a is negative, then it's going to resemble the um, cube function. So it's going to be like this for a positive and the opposite for a negative. All right, so let's talk about our current problem. Our current problem for the function f of x here. You can see that we have x here and x squared here. And if you multiply them, you're going to get x cubed. And then we have 2 as a coefficient. So we know that it's going to be for, for the f function it's going to be odd and a positive. So it's going to be like this. All right. Now for the g, the g function, you say, you see right here, we have even exponent and we have positive uh, coefficient. So it's going to be like this. going to be like this. So there we have it. All right. Now moving on to number 11. Okay. So for number 11, I'm just, I just want to remind you on how to solve long division. So hopefully you still remember how to do it. So first let's just set up the problem. Okay, so for long division, you're going to take that first um, 
That's first term divided by that one. So I get 6x squared divided by x. I'm going to get 6x. So this is, you write 6x here. And just like how we, how we deal with long division for um, numbers, you multiply. So 6x, 6x times x, 6x times 2. So we have 6x squared plus 12x. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to subtract. I always put parentheses here to make sure I subtract the whole thing. So what I have is I have that one cancel out. 18 minus 12 is going to be 6x. And then bring down 16. So same thing. We take 6x, we divide by x. So it's going to be 6. So once again, we multiply, we multiply. And then once again, we subtract. So it's going to be 4. So the answer is going to be 6x plus 6, and the remainder is 4. Moving on to number 12. Number 12, we are using synthetic division. This is uh, important. The, the most important part of synthetic division is you know how to set up the, um, um, the table. So make sure we have... Okay, so this is x minus c. So you see right here we have positive 7. So when you set up the problem, it's going to be negative 7 because in this case, c is negative 7 because it's x minus negative 7. And then we're going to take all the... We're going to take all the um, coefficient. Okay, so we have 1 for x cubed, we have 7 for x squared, we have nothing for x, so you're going to have to write 0, and then we have negative 6 right there. Okay, now, this is how we do it. First, you want to copy down number 1, and then you're going to take negative 7, you multiply by 1, which is negative 7, and you put it right here. And then you add these two numbers, so you get 0. And we're going to do the same thing. You take negative 7, you multiply by 0, you put it right here. So we're going to get 0. And then once again, we add. And then you do the same thing. Negative 7, you multiply, you put it right here. And you add, you get negative 6. Now, this, these are the coefficient of your, um, your quotient. Now, it's going to be 1 less than the original degree. So the original degree is x cubed. This one is going to be x squared. Okay, so we have x squared plus 0x plus 0, and this is the remainder. So the remainder is negative 6. So you put x plus 7. Okay, let's take a look at the theorem. Now for the remainder theorem, as you can see is right there, if a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is p of c. So they're asking you what is, um, what is p of 2. So in this case, c is 2. Okay, so all you have to do is you can set up the synthetic division because that's going to be easy. So we're going to have to uh, give the quotient and the remainder. Okay, so we have 2 for c and then I have I'm going to set up my synthetic division. So I have 1, negative 4, 0, and negative 7. First one I copy, and then I multiply, I add, I multiply, I add, I multiply, I add. So we ended up with the remainder 
right here, negative 15. That's the remainder. So that's going to be your P of 2. All right. You see the remainder theorem and the factor theorem is um, related. They are related. Now, you see right here for the factor theorem, we know that because if it's factorable, if in fact we have the factor x minus c, then p of c, the remainder has to be zero, right? So every time you divide everything evenly, you get zero remainder. So they're asking you um, to evaluate p at the proper values and then determine whether x minus 2 is a factor or not. So what do we do? We evaluate. Now, you see right here, we evaluate at 2. So we have uh, 2 to the 4th minus 2q plus 2 times 2 minus 6. And if you do the math correctly, you should end up with 6. Now, 6 is not 0, so we know that x minus, zero, uh, x minus 2 is not a factor of p. All right, so keep that in mind when we do these problems. Okay, so take a look at number 15 here. We have negative 3 is a 0, so we know 1, 0. Now, we want to express f of x as a product of linear factor. So pretty much, we can use the zeros and we can use synthetic division to, to factor it out. So I have negative 3 as a 0. I'm going to set up my synthetic division. I have 1, 1, negative 10, negative 12. So 1 here, when you multiply, you get negative 3. When you add, you get negative 2. When you multiply, you get 6. Add, you get negative 4. Multiply gets 12. You add, you get 0. Now you know it's right because you get 0 here because this is the remainder. So you know that negative 3 is a, um, negative three is a 0. All right, so from there, you can see that we have x squared minus 2x minus 4 here. And then you can set it equal to 0, and then we can, uh, we can try to um, factor. Now, uh, I can't factor here, so I'm going to either use completing the square or quadratic formula. I, al I always prefer completing the square when my a is 1, so I'm going to complete the square. So x squared minus 2x equals 4. And then I take negative 2 divided by 2. It's negative 1 squared. I get 1. So I add 1 on the other side. And then I have x minus 1 here. Square equals 5. Take the square root. Take the square root. I end up with x minus 1 equals plus and minus square root of 5. I move 1 over. Okay, so now we have all, um, all three factors. The first factor is given, x plus 3. And then I have x minus 1 plus square root of 5. x minus 1 minus square root of 5. And there we have it. 